Hello, in this video we are going to look at some of the basic principles for architectural detailing, looking at uh, some of the sources of information and sketching a detail for the first stage. Some people are tempted to go onto Google and look for the particular detail that they hope to draw. In this example I have typed in ground floor wall detail and as you can see there is a great variety of details that have come up and this can be helpful in terms of looking for information but it can also be very dangerous because you can find something that is only applicable in one set of circumstances. In this example there are a couple of details and they may well be very good details for the scenario in which this is being designed however um, it may come completely be irrelevant in terms of the detail that you're hoping to design yourself. Again, this detail might be very good if you're looking to do something that is passive house or maybe timber frame, but it might not be appropriate for the scenario that you're designing for. So what I would recommend is that you have a look around and try to figure out some of the, the specifiers or uh, suppliers that you might wish to consider for your own detail. In this example this is maybe a, a room in the roof for uh, insulation and so on. This particular supplier is Extra Therm. Uh, another option might be Quin Therm uh, insulation. Again this is uh, a detail maybe for eaves and some of the insulation is shown along with with other different elements there. However, what I would say in these scenarios, if you're looking up um, some of these products, you're going to get details that are maybe accurate for only certain elements where the, the particular company has uh, an interest in terms of the materials. So it's good to look around and check out different products. For example, look up a brick manufacturer, look up somebody who manufactures uh, rainwater goods, again look up a tile manufacturer to get an idea what way uh, the, the tile manufacturer would wish for their detail to be produced. And again, yes, the, the insulation, be it Extra Therm, Quinn or, or indeed uh, Kingspan or somebody else. Again, you can download details. Uh, but as you can see, these details tend to be quite specific. Uh, the, the depth of the rafter or the depth of the walls or things like that might well differ in, in the scenario that you're looking for. Here, there, is, there doesn't appear to be a cavity closure and things like that. And yes, it is good to think about U-values and thermal bridging and things like that. We'll talk about those elements in a moment or two. So what do I actually recommend then? In the first instance, it's a good idea to consider the building that you're designing. Uh, that might well be a house, it could be a, a shopping center or anything in between. And what you need to do is identify the areas or the details that you need to focus on. First of all, yes, it is a good idea to draw a section and then it is also good to reference those details in some way. So floor, wall, foundation detail, maybe an interim floor, window sill, window head, eaves, uh, the, you know, the, the different details, maybe the, the ridge or you could be doing a verge detail for the roof, etc. Again, over here for this example, you might well be wanting to show a level access into the building. You could be doing an interim floor, uh, a balcony detail. You might be wanting to show something that has uh, rain screen cladding or sh solar shading or something like that on the outside of the building. Um, again, just all of these details, maybe picking up various elements where there's a barrel roof or, or a roof light or something, or maybe a green roof and a hidden gutter detail, things things like this are all very important. What I recommend then is that you research your products very carefully. Uh, you compile those different pieces of information. So as I've suggested, that could be looking up insulation, bricks, cladding, just all the different elements that are involved in a detail and bring that information together. Um, what you need to decide then is which which type of detail it is you're doing. So uh, is one element meeting another? 
Uh, is it from the side? Is it from below? Are there a number of elements crisscrossing over at a, a junction in the middle or is it a corner detail or, or just exactly what's happening? Again, what I'm showing with these diagrams is what way do the different parts connect? Do they butt one up against the other? Does one fit partly inside the other? Do they cross over? Um, do they lap? Uh, is there a central fixing mechanism required in the middle? Um, you know, how complicated are these details? How many different things are going on? Again, with these connections, you need to consider how they are going together. Do they interconnect? Do they have a pivot point? Is there a requirement for um, something to overlap and then be fixed together like this? Um, you know, is it mastic? What what sort of things are you going to try and use? Um, again, is it a corner detail? Is it fixed in some way? How how do you make the the different elements within the detail all meet and connect properly? So as we're doing the the detailing element, I personally like to do a little bit of a sketch and sometimes a, a few pens and pencils and maybe even a ruler or a rubber uh, can be very helpful in terms of doing that. The first principle is then with this particular detail it is a floor wall foundation detail and first of all the main elements should be sketched so this is roughly showing a 300 millimeter cavity wall meeting the foundation at the bottom and we have the inside floor level and the outside ground level and as you work your way through the different elements you begin to add in some detail so I do recommend drawing things as accurately as possible where you have bricks put the proper height of the brick in maybe 65 millimeters where there is a block put in the proper height of the block at 215 millimeters in this case and again with the, the floor detail or whatever element that is, be it roof, wall, floor, etc. Whatever element, start to sketch in and build up the information. From that then you can start to put in maybe some elements hatched that will help you decide and decipher which is which. Uh, please do make sure that you use different hatching for the different materials, so concrete block work, brick work, etc. And again, insulation then has been put in at this point. We have used the hatching to show the outside ground level. And there are a few other elements put in here. And what I do wish to emphasize is that this detail is not correct. There are things purposely wrong with this detail just to make you think and look for what they might be. So for example, the DPM here, the damp proof membrane, really it should be lapped on the inside of the, or the outside of the inside leaf here. It should carry through and up the back and be dressed back through. And obviously what that particular member is doing is trying to keep out water. So that's the function, but you just need to think about how you show that. And again then, um, what we have over here is uh, a weep hole. So basically the the outside leaf will not necessarily be completely waterproof and any water that gets through, maybe through the, the render in this case, through the mortar joint and it will run down the, the inside of that outside leaf, there needs to be an escape route for that. And here again we have the, the DPC, the damp proof course, and it's good to show that nice and clearly. That's why I've uh, attempted to do that and used a red colour here. Again, another element that's not right here is that building regulations, certainly in the UK, require this to be a minimum of 150 millimeters. The distance that's actually shown there is roughly 75 millimeters, so obviously that's not correct. And again, I've also used a thicker pen to uh, try and show some of the thicker elements like the block work and the brick work you'll notice that the, the render and the plaster on the inside and the, the skirting board and the floor have been added in and certain bits of hatching with that but uh, these slightly lighter elements or less dense elements within the construction they are not firmed up in terms of thick lines 
these principles do carry through whenever you're you're doing details in in CAD and and even in uh, BIM related things as well. The next stage to go to if you were continuing with this as a, as a sketch would be to add in your specification notes and annotate all the different elements. Obviously um, if you're only doing a sketch to give you an idea to then take it forward into CAD or, or maybe into uh, a BIM model or Revit or something like that you won't necessarily need to do this element but it does help you to think through in terms of what you're actually specifying by going through this process of sketching out the detail. And again, keep your, your text in line, keep it neat and tidy. Keep everything consistent, present it uh, in the same way. All the text should be the same type of text and uh, keep everything in line, even if you have some notes at a different part of the drawing, like down here. And these these lines or leaders for the annotations don't cross them over and try to have them at an angle that doesn't conflict with what you've actually drawn within the the detail itself. If these lines were all put in horizontal, they might be misinterpreted as, as something else. And again, if they were at 45 degrees, it might be quite similar to some of the hatching that you've used there for block work etc so just just be careful with how you do that finally then in terms of the main elements or the the basic principles factors that you need to think about in terms of detailing uh, there are five or six main ones first of all you need to think about the the structure of the the building itself how it's going to stand up uh, are the right place pieces in the right place so for example if you've got a precast concrete slab that will need to be supported on the inside leaf and then maybe the the inside leaf could be built off that then for the the, the next floor above that controlling water again that's a, a very important factor so in this case you could be thinking about keeping the water out and that might well be to do with the the drainage uh, or it could be to do with uh, taking the water off the roof and into a downpipe. It might be uh, around a window making sure that something is sealed properly. Uh, another element then is controlling air. So air movement is, is important and you need to think very carefully just about how you manage that and keeping the, the building airtight as such. Um, again controlling the, the heat flow so you'll, you'll need to think about where the insulation goes making sure that uh, things overlap in the right way and of particular relevance here of course is thermal bridging and in some countries certainly you need to think very carefully about that you may well need to specify the performance of the the building envelope that might be to do with a, a u-value calculation or, or some other thing there and it's very very important to to make sure heat is is considered how you retain that within the building and one further factor in terms of the main factors to think about would be controlling water vapor so you want to make sure that you don't have a surface within your construction which can cool water vapor and con condensation can take place and then that might cause you a, a problem maybe within a cavity or within an air void something that you haven't thought about and you do need to think about uh, providing a, a certain amount of ventilation in a lot of different places as well there are other factors this list is not exhaustive and depending on your exact circumstances you might need to think very carefully about some other elements for example controlling sound uh, maybe accommodating movement, so expansion joints and things like that. You might need to think about health and safety. You might need to think about ducts or openings or various things like that. Um, again, there, there could be other factors such as ease of assembly or, or details which are sometimes called forgiving details where maybe different surfaces meet in a certain way and uh, there, there can be quite specific uh, requirements with that. Also, don't forget that, that detailing can have a, a nice aesthetic to it. There can be a, a pleasing aspect to the way something is detailed. 
So hopefully in terms of the overview of detailing that is a help in terms of your, your approach and how you might need to think about detailing. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to like or share and go on to watch the next video.